It's amazing the things that we're able to do with technology to continue to bring this broadcast to you in new and different ways. So we praise the Lord for the wonderful team that's helping us put these things together so that every week we can have exciting, phenomenal, spirit-lifting worship in our own homes. Let's have a word of prayer as we move into the service. Father in heaven, we thank you for another week. We thank you because we know this is a day that you have made and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Dear Lord, with all that's going on, we need you today and we need you now more than ever. So, Lord, we ask you to come dwell with us, come sit with us, come be with us as we worship and praise and preach and lift your name. So, Lord, we invite you into our several homes, but into all of our hearts as we begin to lift your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, we're going to have our opening praise song. Let's sing together as the words are on our screens. Our God is so great and greatly to be praised. Oh, won't you join me in this time of praise and worship and give God a sacrificial praise today? He's so worthy. So come on, let's sing the song, everybody. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is due our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, sing it again. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on and sing every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord Every praise, every praise is to our God Sing hallelujah to our God Glory hallelujah is to our God Every praise, every praise is to our God Come on and sing every praise is to our God Every word of worship with one accord Every praise, every praise is to our God Sing hallelujah to our God Glory hallelujah is to our God Every praise, every praise is to our God. I like this 
next part it just says God my Savior God my healer God my deliverer Yes He is Yes He is God my Savior God my healer God my deliverer Yes He is Yes He is God my Savior God my healer God my deliverer Come on say Yes He is Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. Every praise, every praise, come on, every praise, every praise, come on, say it, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Amen. Listen, we have a few announcements this week. Most important announcement that I want to make is that next week is the first Sunday and we are going to have virtual communion. As is our tradition, we have communion on our first Sunday, so we're going to have it virtually next week. All you need to do to prepare for virtual communion is have yourself some juice and either a cracker and some bread. During the service, I will lead us through the ritual and we will take communion together, heck, taking the body and taking the blood. Listen, along with communion next week, we're beginning to launch out some new ministries. If you're receiving our newsletter, and I hope you are, we put it out three times a week to keep you informed of everything going on at the church. We're going to be starting some new virtual ministry opportunities. We're going to have the deeper dive together. We'll be signing people up very soon for that online so that we can do as a small group a deeper dive. We'll also be doing virtual check-ins. Virtual check-ins are just a time for us to sit together with no agenda but to see each other face-to-face, -face, hear each other's prayer concerns and just chat for a little while. It's a time for us to interact, be together, and just be church family together. Last but not least, I'm going to be starting up Pastor's Bible Study again. In a couple weeks, you'll be receiving the announcement that we will be having Pastor's Bible Study virtually. Now, we'll be doing Pastor's Bible Study virtually a little bit differently because we'll be doing it interactively. It won't just be a broadcast. It'll be a time that you can sit with me as I teach on the Word and ask questions along the way. So we ask you to mark your calendars because we are going to be doing wonderful ministry together. Just because we're separated doesn't mean that we're apart. Amen? Amen. Listen, I want to remind everybody that we need to be in prayer. Our prayer call is every Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. You can dial in on the prayer call at 605-313-5874, and the access code is 390060. There's no better way than to start your day in prayer and praise with the St. Paul family. So we invite you to join us for communal prayer every Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m. at 605-313-5874, access code 390060. Also, we want to let you know of some of the things that have been going on at the church. While you're praying this week, we ask you to pray for, continue to pray for Gail Johnson's family. Sister Gail was laid to rest on Friday at Resurrection Cemetery. We'll be having a celebration of life for her when we are able to gather again. Also, ask you to continue to pray for Sister continue in prayer for Sister Sarah Moloch in the loss of her brother. The Moloch family is grieving because they've lost their brother, but we know that as the St. Paul Church family, we want to stand with Sister Moloch and her family in this time. Last but not least, we ask you right now to begin to pray for Sister Gwen Rayford and her family. Sister Gwen, who many of us know for her wonderful work in our kitchen ministry, lost her mother last week. And we know her mother because her mother was typically right by Gwen's side in the kitchen. So let us pray for the Rayford family as they go through this time of grieving. We'll let you know when we have more information about how 
Sister Rayford's mother will be remembered and when her services will be. But in the meantime, we want to pray for each other. We want to pray for ourselves and we want to pray for the world. Listen, if you have a prayer request or something you need to make the church aware of, go to the St. Paul website at www.stpauloxenhill.org and press contact us. When you press contact us, you'll get a form that will allow you to privately send any prayer requests, announcements, or things that you need to make known to the church. That's the easiest way to get things to us and make sure that we are able to support you and take care of your needs even in this time of social distancing. Listen, it's offering time in the house of God. I want to personally thank you for your strong giving during this time. We've always said that we are more than a building. We are a church body. We are the people of God. And because we've been a church body and the people of God, we're able to continue our ministry and keep our ministry strong. And I want to personally thank you for that. But I also want to personally encourage you to keep giving and keep giving faithfully. It's through that faithful giving that we're able to do the things that we're doing, and we will be able to do the things that we're called to after this. So in this time of giving, we want to remind you there are three ways that you can give. You can always go to the St. Paul website at www.stpauloxenhill.org and put, press the Give button. You can also use the Givelify app and search for St. Paul at Oxen Hill. And on Givelify, you can give in three easy steps from your cell phone. Last but not least, you can always mail your tithes and offerings to the church. You can mail them to St. Paul Church at 6634 St. Barnabas Road, Oxen Hill, Maryland, 20745, Attention Finance Committee. We thank you for your faithful support. We thank you for your abundant generosity at this time. We're going to make this through this, through make it through this, and we are going to be a stronger church after this because we've been faithful to the things that we do. We thank you, we bless you, and we praise God's name. Let's have a word of prayer real quick. Father in heaven, I thank you for all those who are giving today. I ask you to bless the gifts and bless the givers. Dear Lord, I ask you right now to go heart to heart and house to house. Dear Lord, you know what we stand in need of, and you know what we're going through. So Lord, I ask you to just be with us. I ask you to make ways. I ask you to be our protector, our keeper, and our way maker. I ask you to put a hedge of protection around us and put healing over us for those who are sick. Dear Lord, we ask you to continue to bless our frontline workers, our essential personnel, our doctors, and our nurses. But Lord, bless us all as we go through this because we need you now more than ever. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Now, dear Lord, as we make our gifts available and as we make our gifts and prepare to give them unto you, we ask you to bless the gifts, bless the givers. We ask you to multiply it and make it meet the need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, you know, the Bible says this. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. As we make our offerings right now, we're going to be, we're going to be blessed with a song of preparation and a sermonic selection, so let's go forward.
Amen. We continue this week in the sermon series that we started last week, Divine Disruptions, the Lessons from the Quarantine. Listen, as we continue this week, I want you to know that this is, you, you ever notice that sometimes things just get a little bit harder? I don't know about you, but this, this, this quarantine has gotten a little bit harder for me. Uh, and part of it is the indeterminate length of time that it's going on. You know, you feel like you can get through anything if you know when it's going to end. But because we don't know when it's going to end, this, this began to mess with me. This, this is the first week that I literally lost track of the days. This is the first week that I looked up and I was like, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I had to actually say, Alexa, what day is it? Because things had gotten so together and so mushed together, doing the same thing in the same place, the same way. I felt like I was losing. And, and if you're like me, you know that you can have a situation that can make you feel like you're losing it. All of us has had times when we thought we were losing it. We thought we were losing our mind. We thought we were losing our hope. We thought we were just coming apart. And situations can make you lose it. They can make you lose your flow because, you know, some of us, we, we just flow a specific way. You know, when you got your cool on, you know what your cool is like. You know what your flow is like. And some situations make you look at yourself and go, I'm out of my flow. I'm just, I'm, I, I, this is not who I, I, I'm supposed to be Stefan Urkel, not Stephen Urkel. I'm losing my flow. There, there are some situations that make you feel like you're losing your mind. You know, when folk get on you long enough and folk are up under you long enough, they start dancing on, dancing on that last good nerve. You feel like you're about to pop. You're about to lose your mind. You're about to go crazy and not even in a good way. You just feel like it's all coming apart. I feel like I'm about to lose it. And this situation, this quarantine has made me start feeling like in this disruption, I, I'm, I'm losing it. And I know for some of you, you felt like you're losing it. And, and, and the bad part is sometimes situations make you lose your dreams. Sometimes you'll be in a situation long enough that you'll forget the dreams that you had, that you had. You'll forget the things that were on your heart. You'll forget the things that God had told you. You'll forget the things that God had promised you. You forget the things that you have been working on because you're beginning to lose it. You're beginning to fall apart. You're beginning to feel like you can't keep it together. And eventually, if you lose enough of your flow, enough of your mind and enough of your dreams, you'll start losing you. You'll start losing you. You'll start wondering who you're supposed to be. You're starting, you'll start wondering how this is supposed to work out. You'll start wondering, how am I, how am I still me? Am I still me? Or am I turning in to something else? And, and the problem when we start wondering if I'm still me and if I'm turning into something else, you may start to fall apart. And the word of the Lord that God sent me to tell you today and the title of my sermon is, you got to keep it together. You have to keep it together in the quarantine because you cannot afford to fall apart right now. You can't fall apart right now. There's more to life and there's more to go. Then there's more going on. There's more that you've got to hang on to and you've got to keep you, be you and hold on to your mind, your hope, your dreams and who you are because you can't fall apart right now. Because in times of uncertainty, in times of change, in times of disruption, we will start to feel like we're falling apart. But you've got to keep it together. You've got to hold it together. You've got to hold on. Because can we be honest? This is more than we thought it would be. We, we thought this would go on a, a week, maybe two, a month at the outside. And, and we thought we could hold it together. We were prepared. But this is more than we thought it would be. These, these are more restrictions and the restrictions keep changing and going up and down. One minute you don't need a face mask, another minute you do need a face mask. Some of us are walking around in gloves, some of us are walking around in hazmat suits. This, this, this is more than we thought it would be. This is longer than we thought it would take. Sometimes stuff takes longer than you think it will. You ever been at a job and you figured you had your life plan laid out? You were going to start at the entry level. In two years, you get a promotion. By year eight, you'd be at the C level. And by year 10, you'd have started your own thing, making more money than you ever thought you would. And you looking around the, and you looking around the old company like, I used to work there, but now I run something bigger than that. And you looked up one day and you said, it's been 10 years and I'm still in the same cubicle. Sometimes things take longer than you think they will. Doesn't mean they're not moving forward. It's just taking longer than you thought. Sometimes it's more because it's worse than you thought it would be. 
Sometimes we thought it would be easy, but we found out that this is worse than I thought it would be. Sometimes we thought it, we'd be able to get through it pretty easy, but we found out this is harder. This is taking more. This is, this is more stressful. This is more strenuous. This is worse than I thought it would be. But the word of the Lord is you have to keep going. Even when it's more, even when it's longer, even when it's worse, you have to keep going. My brothers and my sisters, you can't fall apart. You can't give up. You can't fall out. You have to keep going because you have to remember that there's a life after this. There's hope after this. There's joy after this. There's peace after this. But can I tell you something else? There's life in this. There's hope in this. There's joy in this. There's peace in this. But you have to keep going. In other words, don't you dare give up. Don't you give up. Don't you fall apart. You've got to keep going because let me tell you something. You ain't the only one and you aren't the first one. There are plenty of folk who have had to keep going and keep hanging on and keep holding on in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of storms. There are plenty of people. It was long than they thought it would be. It was worse than they thought it would be. It was more than they thought it would be. But they kept going to get to the end of it. And sometimes you got to put on your big boy pants and put on your big girl pants and say, I'm going to make it through this. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to keep on. I'm going to hold it together no matter how hard it may, no matter how hard it may be, no matter what it takes. I'm going to hold it together because I've got to keep going. I've got to hang on and I've got to keep myself together so I can keep it together so I can get to what God has promised me. Never underestimate the promise of God and never underestimate the power of the promise, but also never underestimate the dreams that God has given you and the revelation that God may be giving you in the midst of your dreams. Speaking of dreams and revelation, I want to prove to you that you can make it through this and that you can make it through times of quarantine by going back to the Bible. I want to tell you about a man named Joseph today man named Joseph, whose life we find in the latter third of the book of Genesis, Joseph is a testament in what it's like to have a lot put on you, but have to keep it together because you know what God has for you. Bible tells us of Joseph, Joseph is one of several brothers. He's one of the several sons of Jacob. Uh, Jacob has a whole bunch of sons. Joseph is his favorite. We know that Joseph is his favorite because the Bible tells us that Joseph is his favorite. The Bible tells us that he loved Joseph so much that he gave Joseph a coat of many colors. While everybody else was walking around in saddle and brown, Joseph had dye. He had purple and yellow and gold. Actually, we don't know what color it was, but we know it was many colors. But at the time, the reason that many colors made a difference is because everything was the same color. The dyeing process was a process of luxury. It was a process that was expensive. So if you had something with color in it, it cost a lot and it took a lot. So Joseph, among his brothers, is walking around decked out, laid out, and he got this coat from his daddy while his brother's sitting there like, man, I, I, I'm in beige. Been in beige my whole life. And this dude walking around. But can I tell you, sometimes your blessings will make other folk mad. Joseph is living a life of luxury and he's his father's favorite. And he has a dream. Bible tells us that he has these multiple dreams where he has these things happening and it says that he stood up and a sheaf that represented him stood up and the other sheaves representing his brothers bowed down to him. And it says another time that the sun, the moon, and the stars bowed down to him. And Joseph told folk his dream and they looked at him like, have you lost your mind? You trying to say we gonna bow down to you? Even his father was like, you gonna say me and your mother bowing down to you? Who you think you are? Here, here's the problem. Sometimes God will reveal to you who you are and folk won't be able to stand you for it. Can I help somebody? Sometimes you ever know folk that just can't stand you. You ain't done nothing to them. You ain't spoke to them. You ain't try. And I don't mean you ain't spoke to them in a bad way. You just don't know them. You've never had interaction with them. But every time they look at you, you can see the hatred in their eyes. Every time they look at you, you can see that they are not on your side. Sometimes people will see you and not know why they don't like you. And sometimes it's because there's a blessing of God upon you. I want to remind you that even in the quarantine, the blessings of God can be upon you. I want to remind you that even right now, the blessings of God and God's favor can be upon you. So don't worry about the distractions. Don't worry about the folk that don't like you. Sometimes, can I help you? This quarantine has helped some of you get away from folk that couldn't stand you. It's taken you out of circumstances where folk were always on your back, always on your nerves, and always talking about you. I want to let you know a secret. They having Zoom calls about you right now. 
but you ain't on them. And the reason you ain't on them is because God is protecting you from what the haters are saying. Some of you have to understand that part of the problem with haters is that you've been listening to them too long and you've been listening to what they say and you've been trying to interpret what they say and you've been trying to fix how they see you. Don't worry about how they see you. Worry about how God sees you and worry about how you see you. But here's the thing. Joseph's dreams were so big and Joseph had gotten so much that his brothers, this his family, sold him into slavery. The Bible tells us that they put him in a pit. And one of his brothers was like, well, just put him in the pit. Now he said, yeah, I'll come back and get him later. But they see some traveling traders going by in the distance and they say, let's sell him. We, we, ain't no reason for us not to get nothing out of this. So they sell their own brother into slavery. And the Bible says that he goes off into slavery and they take his coat of many colors, they drench it in blood and pretend to their father that somehow wild animals had killed his favorite son. But the Bible says that as Joseph is sold off into slavery to traveling traders, that notice he's in quarantine in a pit, but he gets out of the quarantine in the pit and sold into the pit and quarantine of slavery. Bible tells us that these traders take him to a man named Potiphar. Potiphar was the chief of the guards for the for the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh. And they put Joseph there. Joseph is sold there. He's sold into slavery. Watch this. First he's sold out by his family. Then he's sold into slavery. Can I tell you, it got worse than he thought. It was taking longer than he thought. But Joseph still kept it together. Let me explain something to you. The reason he was able to keep it together is because he concentrated on the revelation. The revelation that he had had in his dreams was that God had something for him. The revelation he had had in his dreams was that God could make a way. The revelation that he had in his dreams was that he would rise up and that things would go well. I want to let somebody in here right now know, don't you give up in this quarantine because you had a revelation before this. You've had a revelation of who you could be, who you should be, who God was calling you to be, what God was calling you to do. And if you think God didn't know that this was going to happen, then you've lost your mind. God knew this was going to happen and he's going to get you through this, but you've got to hold on to what God said. I need you to understand when you hold on to what God says, it gives you courage. It gives you power. When you hold on to what God said, people can't talk you down. People can't talk you out and people can't talk you off because you know what God said. You know what God revealed to you. Revelation is simply what God has shown you from the throne room of heaven. And when God peeks back the curtains of time and space and shows you something that is beyond where you are, beyond who you are, and that he is bringing you to, this is what revelation will do. Revelation will keep you. Revelation Revelation will sustain you and revelation will protect you. Let me break that down for you. Revelation will keep you. Revelation will keep you going through tough times because you'll look at the tough times and you'll realize these times are tough, but I'm getting tougher. These revelation will keep you going through tough times because revelation will remind you I'm not my situation. I'm not what I'm going through and I'm going to keep on. I'm going to keep pushing and I'm going to keep going. It'll keep you. Second thing it'll do, it will sustain you. It'll keep you from the outside in, but it'll sustain you from the inside out. When you have revelation, something on the inside of you wells up when you feel like giving up. When you have revelation, something on the inside of you speaks up to remind your heart and to remind your spirit and to remind your mind that what we're going through is not who we are and the outside can't hurt us, but the inside will not be damaged. I want somebody to know the inside of you will not be damaged through this. You may feel lonely, but you're not alone. You may feel forsaken, but you haven't been forsaken. You've got to remember that God said he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll always be with you, which means that he's sustaining you from the inside out and he's protecting you from the outside in. Last thing you got to understand is that revelation will protect you. When you know what God has said, it will protect you, watch this, from you. Can we be honest? Sometimes who we need protection from is us. Sometimes what we need protection from is the mistakes that we can make. Sometimes what we need protection from is when we start making the mistakes ourselves that will derail our destiny. And I want you to understand the problem with seasons of quarantine, the problems with situations that are worse than you thought, longer than you thought, and harder than you thought, is that if you're not careful, you will throw away your future in the middle of a single moment. 
If you're not careful, you will throw it all away in this season because you'll be tempted to come out of character. You'll be tempted to fall apart. You'll be tempted to do things for short-term pleasure that'll bring you long-term pain. And I want somebody in here to know, whatever you're thinking about doing right now, run it through your revelation. Will this make it to where God is trying to take me? Or will this take me away from who God is trying to make me? You've got to let revelation protect you from you. Because if we're honest, we've all made some bad choices. We've all made some bad choices. Remember them shoes you bought? They was cute, but they hurt. Remember that boo you dated? She was fine, but she made you lose your mind. Remember that job you took because it made just a little bit more money and they worked you like a Hebrew slave? There are times that because of us, we wind up in bad situations. Because of us, we look up and we wind up in places we shouldn't be. There have been times, y'all remember when we used to be able to go outside? Think about everything that you've ever done at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Think about things you spent money on at 2 o'clock in the morning. Think about places you've been at 2 o'clock in the morning. Think about stuff you ate at 2 o'clock in the morning. Because at 2 o'clock in the morning, sometimes you will have a craving. Sometimes you will have a temptation. Sometimes you will have something that feels like it's calling your name. And sometimes somebody will call you. And it's usually a mistake to give in to what's going on in that moment. I want somebody right now who's thinking about making a decision, run it through your revelation before you make a decision in this quarantine. The Bible tells us that after Joseph is sold off to Potiphar and he's living in Potiphar's house, Watch this. The Bible says he becomes successful because the Lord is with him. Genesis 39, 1 through 3 simply tells us that in Potiphar's house, Joseph was rising up. In Potiphar's house, Potiphar had put him in charge of everything. He had given him control of the house. In other words, Potiphar was the man in the house. Joseph was the man running the house. What you've got to understand is that because Joseph had God with him, even while he was in quarantine in slavery, God blessed him in the middle of his circumstance. I want somebody in here to know God is blessing you in the middle of your circumstance. The fact that you're sitting in your house right now able to watch this broadcast is a blessing. The fact that you're able to call folk, the fact that you haven't lost your mind, the fact that you're still holding on, God is blessing you right now. For some of you, you've been sick and God has healed you. God is blessing you right now in the middle of what you're going through, in the middle of seasons of quarantine, in the middle of bad times, in the middle of wanting to give up. God can bless you and give you success in a bad situation. That's part of why you got to keep it together. Because when you keep it together, you'll begin to see what God can do in a bad circumstance. You'll begin to see how God can move in bad times. You'll begin to see how God can work when nothing feels like it's working. And the only thing you have left to depend on is the power, the grace, and the fortitude of God. Even in bad times, God can and God will bless you. But here's the problem. Being blessed often comes with temptation. Bible tells us that Joseph had done so well that Potiphar's wife, the Bible says, took notice. Let me explain something to you. Whenever you're doing well, people will take notice. Joseph is a slave and he's walking around working and he's running the house and Potiphar's wife is looking at her like, oh, uh-huh, I see him and I want him. And, and, but the problem is, I, I told you, this is Potiphar's wife. This, this the man's wife. The, the, the Joseph works for the man and this is his wife and his wife is saying, I want you and I want you to come to bed with me. And here's the thing, Joseph could have said, you know what? I'm a slave. I ain't got nothing to lose. Why not? But Joseph does something very different. Joseph in the midst of this temptation says no. He says no over and over again. Bible says that she kept trying and he kept saying no. Let me explain this. He could have fallen apart. He could have lost him and he could have lost who he was supposed to become in one moment of pleasure. In one moment, he could have lost it all, but he kept it together in spite of it all. I want to tell you, keeping it together is easy when everything is working right. Keeping it together is difficult when everything is going wrong. You've got to keep it together in spite of what you're dealing with, in spite of what you're going through, in spite of what you're saying. You've got to keep you because you will get 
through this. The Bible tells us that in the middle of it all, Joseph has a problem. She wants him, and Joseph runs away one day, and she holds on to his coat. And when Potiphar gets home, she tells Potiphar, uh, yeah, homie tried to get at me. That's not what happened, but that's what she said. And here's the problem. I got to believe Joseph was like, man, if I don't get in trouble, I should have done it. No, you shouldn't. Because God will keep you because you kept your integrity. God will keep you because you stayed faithful to who you're supposed to be. So here it is. Watch this. Joseph has gone from being his father's favorite son to being stuffed in a pit, to being sold to traitors, to being sold into slavery. And now, watch this, he's getting thrown in prison. Potiphar doesn't kill him. He throws him in prison. Think about what that must have been like for Joseph. Joseph had to be like, really? Prison? This is a long way from that dream of bowing down. This is a long way from that dream of being in charge. This is a long way from where I was. This is work. How, how does it keep getting worse? And, and he's in prison. And it's gotten worse. But here's the problem. Even in prison, the Bible says that Joseph was noticed for who he was. Not only was he noticed, but he was doing well in the prison, and he was still useful in the prison. The Bible says that he made some friends in the prison, the people in the prison were having dreams, and Joseph said, oh, I can interpret those for you. He interprets the dreams of two of the royal servants to the king. Joseph interprets them easily, and his interpretations come true. Let me explain something to you. Sometimes in bad times, you've got to find a way to still be useful. You got to find a way to keep making use of your gifts. Find a way to keep making use of what God has put on your life. Find a way to keep being who God has called you to be, even in this time. Listen, in this time, you can still be useful to other folk. You can call people. You can bless people. You can make donations. You can volunteer. You can do all sorts of things to remain useful, to keep yourself sharp, to keep your skills sharp, so that when this is over, you won't have dulled. You have gotten better even with what you've gone through. I want you to understand that God. God sent me today to let you know that you are still useful even right now. You may feel useless. You may feel like all is, all is falling apart. You may feel like it's never going to work again. You are still useful to God and useful to the world even right now. You just got to find new ways to put yourself to use. The Bible tells us very simply that once Joseph has interpreted these dreams, these guys get out of prison. They go back to where they were. One goes back to being the chief cup bearer to Pharaoh, which means that he carried his cup around when he needed some drink. The other one was the baker to Pharaoh. And here's the thing. They got out and the cup bearer said, Joseph told the cup bearer, hey, remember me. And the cup bearer forgets him. He forgets him. He's forgotten about the, these very friends who he helped forget about him in his time of need. Can you imagine how lonely it must have been for Joseph? He's in prison for something he didn't do. He got sold into slavery because people were hating on him. And now he's in prison by himself and the prisoners that he helped have forgotten about him. But the Bible tells us after two years, yes, two years, the cupbearer remembers that Joseph can interpret dreams. Because Pharaoh's having dreams, and Pharaoh needs interpretation. And the cupbearer says, I've made a mistake. I was supposed to remember that boy. And he tells Pharaoh, there's a guy in lockdown right now who can interpret your dreams. Let me explain something to you. What you've got to understand is, wow, that sounds bad. It's like, two years? Are you kidding me? What you've got to remember is that God always knew, and God had a plan. Never forget that God always has a plan. God pulls Joseph out of prison at the right time. And at the right time, God will pull you out because God has always had a plan. God has a plan for you and God has a plan for me. God has a plan to make all things come together. God has a plan to redeem past time, to redeem lost time, and to redeem everything that we've gone through. God has always had a plan and God always will have a plan. Remember Remember the revelation of Joseph was simply that he would rise up and that his family would bow down. His family bows down because they're in need of help. The Bible tells us that once Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dreams, Pharaoh says, you know what? 
I think you're right. I think you have a plan. And Joseph told him, well, you got to put somebody in charge of the plan. Pharaoh said, cool, you do. Look at what I'm saying. He goes from the pit to slavery to Potiphar's house to prison. And now he's living in the palace. I want you to understand God has a plan to get you to where God revealed to you. God has a plan to get you to where God is trying to get you to. This is just a season that we're going through on the way. Consider it a detour. Consider it a disruption. Consider it whatever you need to, but don't fall apart in it because you're going to need to be together when you get to the promise. This is what you have to understand. God's promises are still good because God's promises are always to work out God's plan. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 50 that his brothers then came to him. This is Genesis chapter 50 verse 18. After Joseph, after Joseph's father has passed his brothers come to him and throw themselves down before him and say we are your slaves they said but Joseph said to them don't be afraid am I in the place of God you intended to harm me but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives we won't always understand God's plan going forward but we will always understand God's plan looking backwards. In this moment when Joseph could have been bitter, in this moment when Joseph could have taken out his anger and frustration on his brother, because y'all did this. Joseph looks at it and goes, y'all did this. Y'all did this. I'm the prime minister of Egypt because y'all put me in a pit. I learned how to manage a house at Potiphar's because y'all put me in a pit. I learned how to keep myself together in prison and do well there because y'all put me in a pit. I'm now in the palace because y'all put me in the pit. In other words, had I not gone through the quarantine, I wouldn't be where I am now. And I'm where I am now because God gave me a revelation that he was going to save my family and keep many lives alive by simply getting me where I am right now. In other words, the promise is still good because God kept me and I did not fall apart. I want you to understand that what God is trying to do is keep you but you can't fall apart. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 20, chapter 29 and 11, God says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. My brother and my sister, God's plans are always to prosper us and give us a hope for the future. God's plan for Joseph was to prosper that family and turn that family into a nation. But he had to go through a quarantine before he wound up in the palace. The reason revelation keeps you is because if you remember the revelation, it will power you to the palace. It's in the palace that the revelation became reality. But the revelation couldn't come reality until he went through the pit, Potiphar's, and the prison to get to the palace. I want you to know you may be going through right now. All of us are going through right now. All of us feel like we're losing it sometimes. All of us feel like we're falling apart. Hold on. Hang on. God has a plan. And God's plan is to give us hope and to prosper us. God's plan for the future is to save many lives, yours and mine. And this is what I want you to understand. When God saves lives, he saves them fully. He saves them completely. God has a plan for you and God has a plan for me. And the crux of God's plan is our salvation. Listen to God's promise from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believed in him would not perish but have eternal life. My brothers and my sisters, God's plan is our salvation. God's plan is for us to make it through. And God's plan is for us to have a home on the other side of glory. Keep it together, my brother. Hold it together, my sister. God has revealed that he's going to save us both now and in the afterlife. And God's plans always come together. God's plans always come right. And God's plans always come well. God's plan is our salvation. And God's promise is that he will make a way. So in this quarantine, don't lose hope. Don't lose yourself. Don't you fall apart. The lesson this week from the quarantine is keep it together. 
because God's got a plan. My brother and my sister, God's plan is your ultimate salvation. God's plan is for you to come to him through Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. If you want to make a move today towards God, if you want to give your life to God, all you have to do is pray and tell God, God, I know you. God, I feel you. God, I'm accepting you. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe he died for my sins. I believe that he rose and I believe he's coming back again. Dear Lord, I repent for my mistakes. I'm sorry I've messed up, but I'm going to do my best to do better. I believe this in my heart, and I'm saying this with my mouth. And the Bible tells us in Romans 10 and 10, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, then you shall be saved. You too right now can be saved. Don't fall apart. Reach out to God and let God reach back to you. Listen, if you want more information on salvation, if you want to become a part of the St. Paul Church, just click on our Contact Us button. If you reach out to us, we'll reach back right back out to you. We want to pray for you. We want to get you saved. We want to have you become a member of St. Paul Church if that's what you want. Listen, God is keeping you. God is blessing you. But don't you dare fall apart. The lesson from the quarantine is keep it together. Now, as we go from this place, as we go from this broadcast, but never from each other, know that God loves you and so do I. Now, grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. May it rest, rule, and abide with each of you, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. I love you, and we'll see you next week. God bless you.